painter, the woman behind Colorado Custom Wars. Um, so, okay. You probably can't see. Uh, sorry about that, guys. This all gets twisted around when my kids are bumping it and whatnot. So, I gotta make sure that the angle is good. So, I uh, hope everybody's doing well tonight. I am back. Uh, my eye is still all messed up. So, I may have to throw on my glasses at some point. Are those your shads? No, but I'm going to paint your stuff tonight live, actually. Or I'm going to try. Like, I haven't got the pattern down, so tonight is my uh, first attempt at getting your pattern down. So share the feed, everybody. Make sure you share with your friends. Share on your fishing pages, wherever you think people might be interested in what we're doing. Um, I'm running a sale right now, so I'm going to post that at the bottom of the comments on Facebook. And um, it should be in the description on uh, my YouTube channel as well. Actually, no, I didn't. My eye, I uh, popped, I burst a blood vessel in my eye. It, I didn't, I have no idea how I did it. I literally woke up Saturday morning and my eye was like blood red. It, it, believe it or not, it looks way, way better today than it did then. Um, so I'm rocking no makeup and I might have to throw my glasses on at some point because I don't, I think I'm okay. I can see. Uh, I'm, I, I'm not that blind. So um, if you want information about the sale, go to my Facebook page. I didn't have a lot of time to enter a description on YouTube tonight because I was running late. Um, and so uh, you'll see all that info on um, the Facebook page. And also orders over $100 are actually 20% off. And that is with the code STIMULUS. Stimulus. Uh, for 15% uh, off, $50 and up, the code is STIMULUS15, and both of those um, get free shipping. So over $50 is 15% off with code STIMULUS15. Over $100 is 20% off with code STIMULUS, and both of those price brackets get uh, free shipping up until the end of the month. So... You got like, I don't know, three days or something like that until that's over. I don't remember how many days there are in March, so I can't say. Okay, so I'm going to start on these. And um, this is a, a thread fin shad pattern I was given that I haven't had a chance to tackle yet. So I figured why not do it tonight while I have, um, I had no idea what I was going to do. So I have to get that done anyway. So let's just do it now. How about that? So I apologize for the grossness of my eyeball. It looked much, much, much worse last Saturday. You guys would have been like, what? So I have no idea what happened. I just woke up like that. And I was told that uh, I probably rubbed it too hard or something and burst a blood vessel in my eye. And that it might take a month to go away. And there's really nothing you can do. So its I don't think it's going to take a month. But this is one week's progress that you're seeing. Anyway, I'm just grabbing another glove. I threw away my other glove because I had tons of blue paint on it. And I forgot to grab another one, so I'm grabbing another one. Uh, hello, guys. Thanks for watching on YouTube. If you haven't uh, have you haven't followed my YouTube channel, check it out. It's a little bit of a different view. And uh, share the feed, please, if you can as well, with your friends on your fishing pages. I know that we're getting ready for the ABA tournament the american bass association tournament here tomorrow on lake pueblo so that's exciting the first 2021 tournament for the aba um not the first season tournament because uh, their season starts like at the end of the year in 2020 but um this is their first one this spring so anyways let's get started i know i already said that but i mean it this time so I'm going to put some white on. I didn't get all the paints out either. See, I told you guys I'm running behind tonight. So I, um, I primed these with lacquer already. So I'm just going to put like a little bit of a white base coat on. And we're just going to kind of wing it with this pattern because I don't really uh, have any sort of plan yet. 
And if so, if it turns out like crap, don't worry, I will fix it. To my recipient. Um, so some of these might be just like, you know, test. We're just testing out some techniques to see what we come up with. And if it looks good, we go with it. If we don't, we redo it. It's just as simple as that. I have no room on my wall right now. There we go. There's an empty one. Uh, I'm doing these Caribbean shads I'm working on right now. Um, and they have a little bit of orange on the chin, but they're mostly done. And then I'm working on some fire tigers. I was doing a new stencil for them. They're super bright. I was doing a new stencil for them, so um, I don't have that uh, fire tiger pattern. That's what they look like. So far, uh, part of the order is for um, a local, actually, um, boat shop. Not local, but uh, up in Fountain. He's going to be stocking as jerk baits in his shop. So if you ever stop by Militia Marine, he will have some of my jerk baits. I'm actually just doing this because I made a mistake on this one. And I just remembered that I have white in my gun, so I'm going to fix it real quick. I got some silver paint on the belly of that one on accident. All right, so I believe that I'm going to just... I'm going to put white on a uh, jerk bait. Uh, I put it on a 2.5 and a plopper. And um, he has a bunch of different types of lures in this color. And for color matches, all I ask is that you order five, at least five lures. It doesn't have to be the same exact uh, kind of lure, but I just don't want to try and replicate like a design and spend all this time just to paint one lure that cost $12 and make like five bucks. So it's just not worth my time. So I hope you guys understand. I have to be reasonable about what makes, you know, what makes sense for me. So I could spend like an hour trying to figure the color out and then only paint one lure. Doesn't make much sense. So this is gonna be different than like the thread pinch I did last year. The one I did last year was a brighter, you know, kind of Fun version of Thread Pinch Shed. This one's a lot, you know, I'm going to try and get close to uh, the actual fish if I can. You cannot find paper stencils. Uh, most of the stencils that are for sale for lure painting are actually made out of mylar, which is a plastic stencil material. And you can get them at insanecustomstencils.com. And then Whitmore Farms makes them as well. And then also anarchymodels.com. Uh, they all make good, very different types of stencils for uh, lure making. So all those three I would recommend. What blank is on the Fire Tiger? The last one I just showed, the, the one I showed you here, this was a 1.5, but I have, I'm making it in square bills, jerk baits, um, some little square bill medium divers, few lip lists and minnows. I have a bunch of different different types I'm making it in. Um, and then I'm also making the jerk baits for uh, for the guy who owns his own shop. So hey Mark, hey, hi everybody. My eye is all messed up today, so I don't normally look like this. It's all my my, my old friends in Iowa that I I haven't been back in a really long time. All right. So, thank you for the shares, guys. I really appreciate it. So, I'm going to pull up my picture here real quick. So, I'll be away from the comments for just a minute. I'm sorry, Fishman. If the if the video is not clear for you, you can watch on Facebook as well at Colorado Custom Lures. Um, I, we have issues with our internet right now. We are on satellite internet because we're kind of out in the country. And they are in the process of switching... They just built a new tower closer to us, and somehow, in the meantime, they overloaded the tower that we are on. So if there are issues with the quality of the video, it's probably because of that, and there's not much I can do. Um, so know that in the next couple of weeks, it should be much better. So if you are having trouble with the clarity of the video, just pop over to Facebook and watch us there. Thanks, guys, I, and I apologize for the... Um, 
for the crap quality. So I have this thread fin shed here, and this is like gonna be almost nearly impossible to completely duplicate with paint, but I can to, to uh, make this look somewhat realistic. Um, so we're gonna do, I'm thinking here real quick. I don't know, we're just gonna do like maybe some iridescent pink on the bottom, some purple on the top, a little bit of blue, you know, back here, and then uh, just some shiny, you know, white silver colors. Um, this would be a nice one to do in a holographic lure, but unfortunately, I don't have holographic in every every type of lure. So we'll do the best we can. So I'm gonna grab some pigments. I'm just gonna grab one, a couple things real quick before the show. So these are, um, these are some pigments I got on AliExpress and oh no, I'm fine. Like this doesn't even hurt. My eye doesn't even hurt. It's just a freakish thing that happened and it'll go away. It's fine. It doesn't hurt. It just looks terrible. It happens to a lot of people. You just probably, they hide until it goes away. So you don't ever see it. So these are like white, um, these are white pigments, but they kind of have like a color shifting quality to them. I don't know if you can see. Um, I know the video quality on YouTube is kind of not great, um, but you can kind of see how that looks a little green in the light. And then this one looks a little bit pink or violet. I don't know if you can see that or not. Anyways, um, they're really shiny and <clears throat> they just give you a really nice sheen or whatever. So I'm going to pull out, um, I'm going to pull out a couple of them. And we're gonna use, um, this one I think is like a whitish, a more whitish one. Um, so I'm gonna start with this one. So we're just gonna use some transparent base, or you can use 40-30 balancing clear. My transparent base is back here. And then you just mix the pigment in with this clear paint, and you can just spray it right on the lure that way. And this will give it a nice sheen for a base. You can use um, like metallic, paints or you can use pearls this is just a slightly different look and you can there's really no rules uh, but this stuff's worth trying and AliExpress has like infinite numbers of different kinds of pigments you just have to kind of go waste some time on there until you find something that interests you you waste a lot of time on there too I tell you let me tell you okay so I can pop back and forth between your comments in my picture. Um, good evening. All right, Anthony, go ahead and PM me if you have ideas for new lures. Thank you so much for the stars, Miguel. That's very nice. Um, thank you guys for the shares. I really appreciate it. So let's see how this looks on here. And I'm just going to use my 2.5 that I dropped. So you're just going to mist this on really lightly. It's just going to give it a sheen. It's not really going to add any color. Um, so I don't know if you, you probably can't even see it. You guys are going to have a hard time even seeing it. Um, but it will add, add some. And then we may go over it again later with some, like, adult. I'm just trying this to see uh, if it makes a difference. And that's all it's really about when you're creating these things is trying things that you really have no idea if they're going to work or not and praying for the best. You know? So I'm just heat setting this. And I'm not really like, there's, this isn't necessary. This is just so I don't have to wait for it to dry to put some more on. Um, you don't have, you can just wait if you want to, or if, you're, or if you're doing like a big batch, you literally can just like set it aside, let it dry, go to the next one. And by the time you come back to the first one, it's dry, but it's up to you. So thanks you guys for the shares. They're greatly appreciated. That fire tiger. Yes, I can. Sure. 
I think I actually did do a few of the lightweight ones, so I will set them aside for you. Um, so I, I did a bunch of coats of this just because I wanted it to be really, really shiny. It looks like it has a green sheen. It doesn't, but it could just be a, like the lighting that you're seeing. I do have one that has a green sheen to it, but that's not the one that I'm putting on here right now. Um, so I don't know, this one's just regular like white basically, but it's very shiny now. So let's do another one with that too. You can't really hurt anything by putting this down underneath. Um, it's just adding like some re reflective properties to the base coat basically. Um, and then I'll go to the next one here. I'm doing three because I might try some different things on different ones. And then whatever works is what I'll end up doing for all of the five that were ordered. Okay, that sounds good. I can do that probably. I think I already accepted that payment, so I might just need to send you a separate invoice, Ross, so that you don't get charged. I don't think you got charged shipping actually, did you? Anyway, so you don't get charged shipping. I don't know. All right, so just a quick heat set again. This seems to be going on. Sometimes the pigment will like sit at the top. So when you get to the bottom of your paint cup and you start spraying, the pigment is a little bit like more concentrated at the end of the cup. I don't know if that makes sense how I said that, but that's like basically. Um, sometimes you don't need it much when you get to the bottom because all the gold is it's a little heavier there. So anyways, let me close that one up and let's try um, to do the top first. So the top of this fish, um, yeah, so I can just send you an invoice. Like if you guys ever want to add something to your order that you see or think of, um, I can send you a separate invoice so that you don't have to pay shipping twice. Just PM me and I'll take it out of inventory. I'll send you an emailed invoice that does not include shipping. And then um, you won't have to pay for shipping twice. Otherwise I can refund it if that if you happen to just, or I can throw something in that's about $5 or whatever. Either way, I don't want you to get like forced to pay shipping that you don't need to be paying for, so. All right, this has got purple on the top. And so um, it's kind of like a, almost like a plum, but I'm afraid that might be a little too dark. So I might, I might mess around with mixing a couple of colors. So I'm gonna grab my plum and I'm gonna grab a color shift. Um, I'm gonna grab a few things actually. So this is, a, this is pearlized plum. It's just a regular Createx color. And then this is purple uh, color shift which just has kind of like, it's like iridescent. So it flashes to like a pinkish blue also. Um, violet. So let's try a couple combos and see what we like. And um, I'm, a, you know, I don't want this to be too bright. So I may have to go back over it with like a white pearl to like tone it down a little, but we'll see what happens. So let's mix the color shift in the violet and then we'll try it with the pearl plum and we'll see what we like better. So there's a lot going on with the thread fit chat. It has some very subtle but um, interesting colors, and they vary. Some of them have green, some of them have purple, some of them have blue, more blue. But I'm going off the picture of Gibbet. So that's what we do. Go off the picture. So I'm just adding a little bit of Createx reducer to my cup, and then I'm stirring. So I mixed some, it looks really pretty in the cup. I wish I could show you guys the cup a little bit closer up. Um, it looks really cool. It's just a color shift mixed with um, a transparent violet. And this violet is Calm Art. If you're not familiar with this brand, it's really good. It sprays really smooth right out of the bottle, kind of like Golden High Flow. Um, and they sell these, uh, like art supply stores usually have them, like Dick Blick or um, who else? Mr. Art is another good place to get some of the lesser known brands and the inks, like the India inks, the Dr. P.H. Martins, and the, uh, who else is, I'm trying to remember. There's another ink brand that's common. Um, 
a dry blank. I don't really use it. No particular reason, just. Okay, so we're gonna go right across the top, and when you want, when you go across the top, you wanna kinda of angle your brush upwards so that you don't get a bunch of overspray down on to the side of the lure, because we don't want that to be perfect. You can um, go back and fix it if you do get it on the side, but if you can avoid it to begin with, that's, you know, easier way. Okay, so I'm just doing a bunch of layers, and I am going to have to tone this down for sure. It's way too bright, but it's okay if you go a little dramatic on lures because, you know, you kind of want them to be, like, a little bit brighter, prettier than the actual, like, boring bait fish, but I try to get, like, semi-accurate. How's everybody on YouTube? There's a whole four people over there. So I'm just I'm just adding a little bit more to get the a good um, iridescent effect, and I got a little more overspray than I would have liked on that side, but that's okay. I'll come back and fix it. So see how that's kind of um, purple, but has a little bit of a shift of color to it. And I don't know I don't know if you're seeing true to color on the um, YouTube channel because it looks weird on my laptop, but. All right, so let's try the other one and see what that looks like, just to see, okay? I usually have my dump cup in my paint booth. Um, because I usually paint in there, so that everything gets sucked out of the room. But you can't see me painting very well if I paint in there, so I have to move myself over here. It's a pretty good fan, so it, it'll suck like pretty much from the whole room. It just goes out faster if you do it in there. Okay. And then every show I have to mention that I do wear a respirator while painting. The only time I don't is while I'm doing my show. So please wear a respirator always and have good ventilation if you're painting. Um, not good for you to breathe this stuff, no matter what, whether it's acrylic or or solvent based. It's not good for you to breathe it. So let's mix this pearl plum with a little bit of the color shift. I'll probably have to get some more of this because I, I use this color a lot. This is the color. Um, wait a minute. No, never mind. That's not true. I was gonna say this is the color I use for trout, but it's not. There's another one. The pink color shift is what I use for trout which is a pink to purple instead of a purple to pink. If that makes sense. It's just more more pink. And this one's more purple. Just to help my count. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, I'm not really good with like the whole um, drawing YouTube followers thing, which means I'm probably never gonna make any money on there. I don't think it would be much anyways, to be honest, unless I started like devoting all of my time to it, which means I have no time to paint. So I don't really know how people do that. Probably don't because they don't have kids. <laughs> kids ruin everything, don't they? I'm totally joking. They're worth it. You just gotta keep telling yourself that, right? Okay, I'm gonna go back to your comments over here. If I missed any of you guys' comments, I was gone for a little while. Um, is my comment pinned? Hang on a second, I think I lost my beat. Okay, so let's go across the top here. This is kind of thin, so I have to do a, a few layers. This looks more pink, honestly, and I'm not sure that I'm a fan of that because um, you can almost mix a little bit of black or, or dark silver or gray with this. Um, but we can probably do some layering to fix the brightness issue. Um, and I'll try that a couple different ways, and we'll see what works best. But with with these fish that are like shad like fish, the iridescent colors are really are effective to try and get um, a realistic look because the colors are like that. On the bait fish, they flash, 
They flash in the light. You know what I'm talking about. All right. Shad, kick your butt. Well, if you want them realistic, they're really hard because the, the details are very subtle. And uh, so you have to be really detail oriented and you have to make a lot of mistakes to get uh, to not overdo it. You know, you have to not overdo it, do it. But I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. They are hard. Shads are kind of hard. Crows are more forgiving. You can kind of get crazy and they look, they still work out. So this is this color versus the violet. This is this is the violet here, and then this is the plum pearl mixed with the color shift. So you can see that one is much, one's darker than the other. I don't know if you guys can see the difference there, or if it looks about the same on your camera. But to me, um, this one I think is going to work better. So I'm going to switch back to that one for the last lure, and we're going to see how that goes. You know, actually, I'm going to try one more thing. I'm going to try a mixing the pearl and the silver together and see. Let's do purple and silver and see if that gets close to the actual color. And then I won't have to layer. I'll try both things. But root beer bat, a root beer what? Bass. What's a root beer bass? Um, sepia would look close to the picture, you think? I don't know. The old neighborhood is watching. Oh gosh, now I'm like all nervous. Don't do that to me. Okay, uh, let's get some silver out. And what kind do I want to use? Um, I'm thinking, guys, don't leave me. No, not that one. No, not that one. I have my paint over here. Sorry, I'm not trying to ignore everybody. Um, I say I don't. Oh, okay. This will work. This is a dark um, metallic. This is a craft paint. It's called galvanized tin, and I've never found another gray metallic that actually. Oh wow, that needs to be stirred. Shook, stirred, whatever. It's really dark. It's supposed to be dark, but it's not supposed to be that dark. I think it's been sitting too long. Because I don't use these colors like ever. Oh yeah, that's not mixed together at all. Whoopsies. I think it's too thick to really shake it. So I might have to use something else. My bad, sorry guys. That's what you get for not using your colors for like 10 months. I'm going to grab a different one. What the hell did I do with that? Oh, it's right here. Okay. This is just um, Tester's Aztec Silver. So I'm just going to clean this out so I don't have a bunch of that. It looked like black because all the metallic separated from, and it's still in there. It all separated from, like, the metallic flake separated, and I can't get it shook up. It sat too long. I don't usually use craft paints, but I've never found like a dark silver. Do you guys know what I mean? If you're a painter, it's really hard to find a good dark silver. They're all like this color, this sterling silver kind of color. Okay. So let's try some of this purple and silver and we'll see. You don't need much of that purple. It's still really bright. Let's try toning it down with some black. And I and with the black, you also have to be careful because you don't want to put a drop in there, otherwise you'll turn the whole thing black. You have to just dip your brush in in the black paint a little bit. So you just get a little bit on the tip, which is that's probably too much. And then stir it in there. And that'll darken it up a little bit, but you got to be really careful that you don't overdo it. Otherwise, you'll turn the whole cup black. So this made it more of a dusty. Um, it's really hard to show you, like a dusty dark purple. And I'm going to add, well, I'm going to leave it. I'm just going to leave it. Um, I can't show you the cup, really. I don't know if you can see that at all. 
I might be able to show you. I ran over my phone this time. This chair, I'm too short, is the problem. So there's the color. If you can see it. Okay. You're in Kathmandu and saw my stuff. Awesome. I just dropped some more stuff off. Thank you so much. I'm not nervous. I've done so many of these shows, Mark, that um, way beyond the nervous point, but it's funny that you guys are watching. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go across the top of this jerk bit again. I did the shimmer on it earlier. So this is a much darker, I don't know, It's I only have one coat on right now, but you'll be able to see in a minute how much closer this looks to the, the actual color. And again, it's thin, so I gotta do a little bit at a time and heat set and clean. If you missed the story of what happened in my eye, I burst a blood vessel in my eye. It doesn't hurt and I'm fine. It just looks terrible. And so that's why I wasn't on last week because it was really gross. So I didn't want to, I didn't want to scare anybody. I was converting to like demon hood or something. No demons. So this is a much darker purple. I'll give you guys a quick peek at it. You tell me if you think it's closer. I'll show you the picture if you want to see again. The picture of the fish. So here's what this purple looks like versus see that purple. And then uh, compared to this purple. You can see that? That's the difference. So one is way better than the other. And we'll just keep keep on keeping on here. I wonder if, uh, if you layered it, if it would. But that second, that last one to me looks way better. Uh, no, this what this airbrush is a, a it's an eclipse. So it's a 0 0.35. Uh, and yep, I think so too. Um, so this is a 0.35, but I generally use 0.3 or 0.5 almost all the time. Um, I like both. I like the 0.5, honestly. I, I use it more than I use anything else, probably. And that's not true of most painters, I would say. Okay, so the next thing we got to do is um <laughs> you enjoy fishing josh however is just drinking <laughs> you guys are funny all right so now we got some bluish green above the nose on this on this guy here and then we have what looks to be like a little bit of gold kind of like just underneath the purple and then maybe a subtle lateral line and some black markings and then we got to do like some shiny scales on the bottom i'm not going to be able to get those tiny scales on the top because i don't have you'd have to do that with foil and i can't i just can't do it sorry i don't mean to be a jerk but i just can't do it so either duo blue green or i have some inks here that are really good and I think that this color, Jade, might look spectacular for these markings near the face. I might have to um, outblend the purple a little bit to get this on there. So I might have to go over the purple with white a little bit um, to get this to show up. 
on the face. Um, then we'll do a little bit of gold and then we'll do uh, some belly scales and then some spine, like darkening along the spine, some markings uh, near the face and some belly scales. Okay, so let's get some white in here and we will clear a spot. This thread pin doesn't have um, as much of a black marking on it. It's in a lower spot. It's in a lower spot than some, and I'm going to try and get as close as I can to the actual picture. Now I'm just spraying towards the face so that I don't get over spray on the body area of it. And I'm just spraying like basically this direction. And then once I get that done, um, I'll put on the blue green iridescent right in that area. I'm never happy with the first round of this stuff, just so you guys know. When the finished product comes out, it almost always looks a little different than what I do on the show. Because I'll always sit back and be like, well, I should have done this instead. Or I'll think about it, I'll sleep on it, wake up in the morning and be like, hmm. This has a little bit of overspray on the body as well is you just take some white and you go along the edge here to kind of like clean up the overspray. And then I'll come back over it with that. Um, I'll come back over it with, with that shiny stuff. Okay. It just kind of cleans it up a little bit. And you can do that with any of them. That one just had more overspray, I thought. I don't know, let's do this one too. It really shouldn't be much purple at the top. It's just a little bit, so. I got it on the face and everything. A mess over here. Okay, this one I don't think I really did, so I'm not gonna jack with that one. All right. If I do miss any of your comments, you guys can uh, feel free to ask again, and uh, I'll try not to ignore you again. No, this is uh, Apple Watch. The Apple Watch, I got it for Christmas a couple years ago from my wonderful husband who spoils me sometimes. Hello, Billy. Okay, let's put some of this jade in here and let's spray. It's clogged. Um, share the feed if you can, guys. Also, I in the pinned comment, which is it even still there? It probably isn't, is it? Let's try this again. Hang on. I think I lost, did I lose my pin comment? Can you guys tell? It's not on mine. So I'm gonna redo it here. I'll, I'll pin it again. I think I kind of left for a second on accident. When I came back, it was gone. Hello, Walter. There it is. Or maybe I didn't pin it like a moron. These are all possibilities. They won't let me pin it. Huh. They won't let me pin it. Weird. Sorry, guys. I'm not trying to stall here or be a weirdo. 
I just can't figure out where I can't pin that. Uh, I'm just going to, while that's refreshing, I'm just going to clear this out. Sometimes these pigments can get stuck in this dropper. So just take a pin or a paper clip or whatever you got around this pointy. And you can usually clean them out that way. Sort of, anyway. I, this is way stuck up in the, in the dropper even. But I should be able to get enough. Oh, for crying out loud. I'll just pour it. Okay. Sometimes you just have to go back to the simple way of doing things, right? Okay. Let's try that again. There we are. There we go. All right, Robert. Share the feed if you can, guys. There we go. I finally got it in. All right. So we're doing this color. There it is. Dr. P.H. Martin's Jade Iridescent. Let's pray this doesn't look like butt. So I'm just going like basically on the gill plate. Behind the eye and above the eye. This stuff is kind of temperamental spraying out of the um, gun. The flake, the flake in it, the metallic flake is really big. So it has a tendency to kind of get like bound up inside your, your nozzle or needle. So you sometimes you have to spray it like really fast. Like not not open it wide up and hold it, but just like pulse almost, so that you're just like sending it out with a big gush of air, but not holding down the like that. Does that make sense? I don't know how else to describe it. It's just so you get a lot of PSI, but you're not holding it down for too long. Because if you do, then obviously you're going to get way too much paint. So that's the color right there, the jade. So it's a little green. I'm not sure what to do about that yet. Maybe I need to mix it with blue and see what that looks like. This is this one is really hard. Like, oh, there it is. I can't remember where I put that. So let's mix it with blue and see if that. Let's try the dark blue. This is iridescent deep blue. There's a marble in all of these, so you have to kind of shake them up really hard. Um, I think it's at like 35 psi or so, somewhere around there. Yeah, this one's clogged too. Wonderful. Okay, it came out though. I don't use these very often. So this is more of a blue green now. So we'll see if this looks better. Um, just started busting these out again here recently. Uh, I kind of didn't touch them for a while. And uh, so they're all like, all the pigment settled into my droppers, which is sort of a problem. Okay, so I got to get the, the jade through so that we're... It'll all be stuck in the front of the brush, so I have to spray spray till I get the actual color out that I want. Um, oh, why does he not show? He's watching the kids, bud. So he has to, we have two kids, and it's really hard for us to be on at the same time. And it's also very um, much not good for you for lead and plastic without a respirator on. So doing live show is a little bit harder. I know some people will do it, but it's really not good for you. Soft plastics and lead are very toxic and it's very difficult to do a live show um, when you're wearing a respirator. I've gone on live in the middle of the day before just to kind of like show everybody what a work day is like for me, but um, I haven't done a lot of those. You can't hear me. so. I don't like yelling. My kids probably don't agree with that statement. I don't like how this looks at that much at all. I don't know. I'm gonna have to bath blend it again because it's way oversprayed, but in my opinion, this is too blue or something. I don't know what you guys think. Um, let me see here. 
I'm gonna look at the picture again and see. Um, uh, I mean, there's way too much there. I'm definitely gonna have to back blend this, but I mean, we're somewhere in between, I think, for the color. But I'll just do the other one like this and we'll just keep on going with this color. Um, this blue, for whatever reason, I forgot, is very temperamental. That color in particular just likes to get really clogged in my brush. I kind of forgot how bad it was until right now. And you know, it's funny because Wicked um, Blue Pearl does the same thing. It clogs your brush every time. And Wicked is just acrylic paint. It's just like a regular acrylic airbrush paint if you're not familiar. Um, so I got, I got a lot of other blending to do, so it's not going to stay like that. But um, anyway, I don't know what it is about the blue, the dark blue, but it always clogs my airbrush, no matter what brand it is. And I don't understand it. I need a paint expert to explain it to me because it's frustrating. So I'm just cleaning this out, and we're going to go on to, um, oh, we're just working on Threadfin Chad. Share the feed if you can, guys. All right. Um, back to white, because who doesn't like to keep that blending? This gets faster once I figure the pattern out. But right now, it's slow. The way this pattern is, it kind of goes in a straight line. Um, like the top is colorful and then the bottom is all white. So you can just draw kind of like a straight line across the body, about halfway up the eye, and just cover all those colors on it. Like that. So you have a straight line. And just a little bit of the color there. And I'll do the same with the others. Again, we're just cleaning up the lines here. And trying to leave the color where it's supposed to be on the fish. All right, so now we got to do some gold. That looks pretty cool, actually. I kind of like it. And then um, this wear bill, which just has the aqua iridescent on it, which looks prettier, in my opinion. And it's probably more accurate than the, the blue mixed in, in my opinion. It's closer to the picture. I need to start remembering to post the picture. I, I've done it a couple times where I post the reference photo beforehand, but I need to get better at remembering to do that more often where I post the reference photo before I go on so that you guys can see what I'm going to paint and you can keep referencing it to see how bad I suck at painting it. Okay, so some gold. Now, this doesn't have to be an opaque gold. I want it to be um, more of a transparent gold, but I'm going to put some more of that shiny white stuff on here first. So that's transparent base, and then I'm going to grab my white, pearl, my white pearl pigment, and this stuff just gets mixed with the clear paint if you weren't here for that first part of the show. And this is just um, a mica powder. Uh, that you, I got it on AliExpress, but you can get it on Amazon. Just look for mica powder and look for the, um, just look through the pictures and you'll see. Um, these, this came in a kit that had a bunch of different, they're color shifting basically. Like they have slight hues of different colors that just show up in the light. And um, if you get them on AliExpress, you have to wait a long time for them to get here, but they're really cheap that way. Although AliExpress isn't as cheap as it used to be. 
now that they're having to pay more um, to import things to us they they raise their prices so uh, they pass that on to us basically the consumer So I used to be able to get super, super cheap, you know, pigments and just all kinds of miscellaneous stuff on there. And now, now um, sometimes it's just as cheap to get it on Amazon almost. I don't know. I don't pretend to understand it all, but. Shipping went way, way up. Probably because of import fees. So, it is what it is. All right. So, I'm just putting a little bit more pearl back on here where I covered it up. And then um, we're going to move on to the gold. I don't mean to bore everybody. I'm sorry. But all my... This is, this is what it takes, though, if you want to do it right. Okay, gold. I'm gonna grab my gold here real quick. Here it is. This is Createx Pearlized Gold. I, I just put a marble in here. The regular Createx paints do not come with marbles in them. I actually you have to buy glass beads because marbles don't fit in here. I tried that once and it didn't end well. It got stuck. If you needed, if you needed that explanation. Um, so just get glass beads like at Hobby Lobby or wherever and put them there. The Wicked paints come with marbles in them, but not the Createx, not the regular Createx paints. Stupid. I know. Yeah, the blue. What is with the blue? Um, Wicked black you have a ton of trouble with. Yeah, I don't know what... I have trouble with that too sometimes. Any black, honestly, is problematic usually. So I'm just going to put a little bit of gold right under the colors here. Um, right across. And you got to be careful with this gold because Createx, see I already overdid it. Well, maybe not. The Createx gold is um, pretty transparent, so you can get it in a hurry. So I just put a little bit of gold down the side. Put a shiny gold down the side there. And then um, I'll probably end up back blending that up again with the pearl. That might have been a little bit too much, too. It's so hard to see it when you're spraying it. Um, I am using 4012, and sometimes you still have problems, believe it or not, with the blue. And then um, I always use 4012 to reduce my black paint, um, but sometimes they still are just jerks. I don't base paint that much anymore. I spray lacquer most of the time, but I can't do that without a mask on, so when I'm on here, I'm using water-based paint. But I would say um, auto air black or wicked um, detail black, not the regular wicked black, uh, is a little bit better. You can even use black India ink, and that's pretty smooth too, but that stuff will stain everything you own and it will never come out. So, and it's very runny. So I, I don't know, like try it sometime. It works really well. It's just, uh, you don't have to reduce it or anything. And uh, it's really smooth. All right, so we got a little bit of gold on these right across the midline. And then um, we're gonna do some, actually behind, behind the, um, the eye. On the cheek, I'm gonna put a little bit of gold on these two.
just a little bit. You probably won't even be able to see it on the camera. This gold is pretty transparent. It's kind of hard to see it. I don't know if you can see that or not. I'll try and show you, but I don't know if it shows up or not, really. Okay. I have two cameras running, just in case you're wondering. You can watch me on Facebook or you can watch me on YouTube. Either way, you just get a different view. Um, and if the quality is not great, it could be my connection, and that should be better in a couple weeks. We're expecting to get moved to a new tower. We're on satellite internet, and they overloaded our tower. So we're waiting to get moved to the new tower, and then hopefully it should be great. So anyway, I need something else to drink. You guys want something to drink? Just kidding. You're probably drinking something way more fun than I am. All right, let's see here. Now, we need to do some scales on the bellies uh, after uh, I back one this just a smidge, and then we will do some black markings and, and finish it up. But I'm probably going to do my side, my, uh, I'll probably do my uh, lateral line in sepia because I don't want it to be too dark <clears throat> because they aren't very dark on the thread bin chat. So I usually use like a brown color, probably a little brown on the back, and then a little bit of black on top of that, just to kind of blend it all together. I didn't really jack this one up too much, so I'm not going to go too crazy on that one. But some of these I did, I overdid it on one side of this with the gold just a little bit, so I'm just going to go back across here, just to soften up that line a little bit. I'm just being really anal is basically what it comes down to. Too anal. Okay, that looks better. You guys aren't even gonna be able to, you're probably not even gonna be able to see this. So what I just did, I just blended it a little bit so that they don't, so there's no um, harsh lines. No harsh chemicals. All right, so the scales. Now, let's try this. This is a color that I use on my bluegill a lot. And it is not in box I want it to be in. So I have to turn around. I got another box of paint. Where are you? Oh, there it is. Okay, so this is the color I use for trout. And it's color shift pink. Okay, so we're going to use this to put some subtle scales on the bottom. It's better now. It goes in and out, and it's probably our internet. Um, and sometimes it's great, and sometimes it sucks. But it's supposed, it's supposed to be a lot better soon. We had them come out and look at it, and this the area that we live in is growing really fast, and they're building a ton of houses. And um, so they... They put too many people on the one tower they have for the internet, and they shouldn't have. And so now our internet used to be great, and the last few months have been like very unreliable. Like sometimes it's great, and sometimes it's terrible. Like in the evening, it's terrible, and during the day, it's fine, which is what you would probably expect. Somehow I can still pull this show off. I don't know how, but crown sounds good. Yeah, I do not drink anymore. Once upon a time. All right. So I'm just going to go along the belly with this color. If you uh, saw the picture, you noticed that there was like some pinkish, um, peachish scales on the bottom. So I'm trying to replicate that look a little bit. And I'm just pushing this up against a mesh. This is loofah material, and I'm just pushing it up against the mesh. Um, you can't see that, really. It's going to be, like, very... 
I might have to, um, here, I'll do this side darker. I might have to redo that one side because I don't think I put enough on there. So I'll just have to do a few, um, I'll do one side darker than the other and we'll see what looks better. You can use a color shifting violet, basically. Um, I mean, not color shifting, an interference where it only shows up when the light a certain way. Um, but it's really hard to see it over white. And so I don't know if it would even show up, to be honest. I mean, it might, but it might not. We can try it. Try it like a, a color shift pigment. So here's what the here's what here's what the scales look like in like on the one side where I did a couple coat, and there's what they look like on the side where I just did one. So this is barely noticeable. You can even if that's focusing even, and then this side I did um, more. So I don't know. What do y'all think? Super subtle or a little darker? What's the wrong color? Which is an absolutely acceptable answer. No? I'm waiting. You guys get, have to give me opinions. Share the feed if you can with your friends, everybody. I'd love to have more people on so I can share my sale, which is posted in the pinned comment. And if you do, uh, by over a hundred dollars, you can get 20% off. Just use the code stimulus instead of the code stimulus 15. And as long as your order is over a hundred dollars, you will get 20% off and free shipping. Otherwise 15% off 50. That goes through um, April 1st, you guys, and that's all done. So All right, so I'm doing the same color here, and then I'm going to switch to a color shift, and we're going to see what that looks like. So I did sort of in between on this one. I did um, the pink color shifting for the bottom scales on this one, and I just did kind of like in between the dark and light that I did on the last one because I'm not patient enough. You can't see them. Yeah, I think it's just the can't. It's too hard to see. So let's just keep going because you're not going to be able to see the color shift if you can't see. I mean, you're not going to be able to see the interference uh, pigments if you can't see this on camera because it'll be even less. Um, it'll be even less noticeable. Maybe if I put my hand behind it, you'll be able to see it a little bit better. So here's where I did like the pink scales on the bottom a little darker. It might be harder to see with here. Let me try. Um, let me try that. See if that helps. You can see the pink scales on the bottom. Does that help at all or is probably not? It's too bright. All right. I tried. I'm sorry. When I, when I post pictures of it, eventually you'll be able to see what exactly I was talking about if it doesn't show up on the camera right now. So for these scales, I suspend a, a, like a loofah material inside of a cross stitch loom. To get the, um, <clears throat> to get the flat like mesh that stays in one place and then you can just press your lure up against it just don't move it while you're spraying. And make sure your paint is dry or at least set up enough when you remove it that you don't smear it. Um, and so there's just a light, like pink scale pattern on the bottom and you may not be able to see it very well. And if you can't, maybe if I turn this off, you'll be able to see it. Here, hang on a second. Where's my, I can't find the controller, there it is. Let me try turning this light off. No, no better. Maybe not. 
I can't get the I can't get the light any. Uh, whatever. Okay. You can see it better with my hand behind it. Yeah, sometimes the reflection is just too much. So let's put. Um, let's put a midline on there, and then I'll try and let's try and um, mellow out. I'm gonna do like some. Silver or aluminum, I'm going to try and mellow out these purple colors and these other two real quick. Um, this is, where did it go? Wait, keep thinking I have already now. Um, hang on one second here. Here it is. Look at aluminum. I'm going to try this over top of those and see what happens. This is a sparkly. Um, silver color. It's good for highlights and stuff, and I don't use it very much, but I'm going to see if it will work to tone this purple down. And if it doesn't do much, I'm just going to move on and do the back. I still have some pink stuck in here. I'm just using a disposable um, paintbrush to get to scrub that out. There's just a little bit of tiny bit of pink paint stuck in there. And then um, this is Wicked Aluminum. And I'm going to put a little 4012 reducer in there with it and stir it up. Okay. And then we're going to spray over the purple and see if it helps dull it down just a little bit. It'll give it a little bit of a sparkle, too. Let's just do the whole thing. Actually, it kind of worked. Let me try just there. Eh. I'm going to leave it, actually, I think. So it added kind of like a, a, a chrome dusting almost to it. See how that toned it down a little bit from what it looked like before? Let's try this. Square bill, you might be able to see it better. This color looks good over dark colors too because it shows up better and um, it just kind of makes like a light sparkle. I don't use it enough. This is really pretty bright, so I don't know how much I'm going to do. Okay, so it just added a little bit of silver over top of the purple, hopefully giving it like a little bit less bright look to it. So I'm going to add some sepia to my gun, and then I'm going to get out my straight line stencil, and we're going to see how bad I can screw this line up. You can freehand those long lines if you want to, like the ones that go across the side, but when you get to a jerk bait or, or a lure that's really long, it's really hard to make it straight, because you really have to move fast to get it straight so that the shaking of your hand doesn't make the line squiggly. And when you're doing a craw or something, it's really not a big deal because the craws are imperfect. The lines are rough anyways, so it's not as critical that it's accurate. But when you're doing a lateral line on a fish, you want that to be kind of like pretty straight, you know? So you have to either move really fast and be really accurate, or you have to use the stencil. And I don't mind doing freehand lines, but doing perfectly straight freehand lines on a tiny skinny jerk bait is really, it's pretty hard. So let's not do that. Especially with sepia paint, uh, my sepia paint never sprays very well. Um, it's always problematic. And so I prefer to just use a stencil and not just end up super frustrated. 
So I'm going to put some brown in here. Sepia is just a, a kind of brown. Like you remember sepia tone pictures, right? Same effect. You can use it really like spray it nice and light over top of things to give them a more warmer tone. Thin it down and spray it lightly. Or you can use it like a brown. Um, or you can use it to just yeah like warm up your other colors so this is my straight line stencil i bet, I bet you thought it was going to take me a half hour to find that because that's my stencil pile basically it's extremely disorganized because i can't figure out how to organize it right and so we're going to go let's go uh, this is the easiest one probably we'll do the plopper first so i'm going to take this is just a straight line stencil i made it really fancy out of tape and cardstock and i just take two pieces uh, straight edge pieces of cardstock together until I got a perfectly straight line and that's it super easy oh yeah I will be putting sepia on the back and then I'm going to do black on the very top so I'm trying to get this right below the purple area here so that it lines up in between the gold and the purple from the gill plate all the way down all the way to the back so I'm just going to lift this side up until I get it lined up Okay, and then I'm gonna set it down. And I have like tape here so so it doesn't actually paint like past a certain spot. And then I'm just gonna mist this over top. Careful not to spray too much paint at once. You can do a heat set in between. Just don't move it. It depends how, how dark you want it to be, like I don't want this to be very dark, so and, and I should never have moved that. That was like, that's like a cardinal sin right there. Mistake number one: don't move your stencil, and I just did. So I broke my own rule. Not good. So now you have the tedious job of lining it back up, which I probably won't do. I'm just gonna leave it for now. Then I don't want to take the time and bore you guys doing that. We'll just do the other side, okay? So I'm just gonna line this up. I'm just bending it until I line it up with the purple and the end of the tape. Then I'll set it down. Hold it right there. Don't move it. Just hold it nice and tight against the lure. You can put um, some paper towels under the lure if you don't want your uh, fingers to touch the lure or you don't want your glove to get stuck to the lure um, on accident. And I'm just spraying real lightly here. The other side probably needs to be a little darker, but um, I got a little stupid and I picked up my hand. But you don't want it to be super dark. It just needs to be light to look natural. So just a little bit of a lateral line there. The other side looks the same. It's just kind of a little bit lighter. And I'll fix that later when I have more time to line it up perfect. So I'm going to do the same thing with the jerk bait. I'm just lining it up. See right here where the purple is? and then down to the tail. You're not gonna be able to follow the curve um, when you're using a stencil like this. So you just have to get as close as you can to, to straight along the lateral line. And sometimes they aren't perfect, but I get as close as I can. So I'm just kind of spraying lightly until I get that straight line across the side. And it's just nice and light. That could have been a little higher. Um, a curved line would be better, but uh, I think I made a curved line for these. I just don't know where it is. So it's on my list of stencils to make now. Because that would look better with a curved line for sure. Depends on how anal you want to get about it. I'm pretty particular, but sometimes you have to let the little things go. So there's your straight line on the other side. That's a little higher, which is a little bit better, I think, than the other side, which is a little bit lower. And then we're going to do some um, some markings, the black markings there, in a minute. So um, we'll line this one up. And again, a curved version of this would not be a horrible idea, but I don't have one right now, so we're just going to go 
We're just going to go with what I have. I just spill my paint. When I'm doing like fine detail work, a lot of times I put a cap on because I, I'll end up spilling my paint on my lure then. And these are really good caps. These are badger caps and they are like a hard plastic, plastic, like they're pretty hard, but they move a little. And they fit on both a lot of and badger brushes and they just kind of like sit in there. Way better than the Awada caps they send you that never stay where they're supposed to be or they get gunked up and they don't stay. Highly recommend the badger caps. Whether you, whether you use badger or not, they pretty much fit on like any airbrush. If the bowl is full size, there are some brushes that have different, like really small pinkles. Won't work on them, but they have a smaller um, cap as well. So they make one for the Sotar 2020, and I have um, one of those too. But basically, you can get them on um, USA Airbrush Supply, and they're cheap. They're like 250 or something like that. I just got a whole bunch of them because why, you know, why not just have a bunch if you're going to order one, pay for shipping. Might as well order like six. But, and then you'll never need to, you'll never need to look for them. She'll always have one somewhere nearby or whatever. So there's your lines on those and then um, I'm gonna miss the tops of these with some brown um, my clear coat I use Illumi UV yeah my whole screen is black Anthony I can't see my video at all um, right now I'm using an Awada Eclipse HPCS but I also use Badger airbrushes the I use the extreme Patriot and the Patriot 105 and I use about 35 psi uh, okay, I'm gonna go to my picture real quick, you guys. Did I lose my pinned comment again? Oh, you pinned a comment, Billy. <laughs> you pinned a comment. It's okay. It's no big deal. I'll repin it. Don't worry about it. I could have um, accidentally unpinned the website. Um, and then you probably just tapped to pin your comment on accident, or I could have done it too. I mean, it's possible. There's the pin comment again, guys. It's coming. If you want um, the website info and the discount code, go to my Facebook page if you're on YouTube. Um, I didn't get all the info in the description tonight. On YouTube, I ran out of time. I was running short on time today. So all of that stuff is on Facebook. I'll try to add it in the description when, we're, when I get done here if you don't have Facebook. Or you can always um, email me at coloradolures at gmail.com and I'll send it over to you. So I'm just um, putting some sepia down and then I'll do black on top of that. But since I have sepia in my gun now, I'm just doing a little bit of shading over the purple. So now it's just very subtle on the top. And then a little bit around the eye socket. I like to find eye sockets on my lures because once you throw a realistic or whatever kind of eye you're gonna use, it helps to um, I like the eyes. Whatever color you use, I don't do it all the time, um, but a lot. A lot I do. So um, there is the with the brown on it, and let me do the rest of these really quick here, and then we'll move on to the black markings. Sorry, I just got a PM. Oh, it's okay. You, I, I might have done it, Billy. It's possible that I accidentally hit pin and pinned your comment, so don't even worry about it. It's very easy to, like, accidentally tap it. Sometimes when I leave um, to go look at my reference photo, it sort of kicks me out. So 
I might have lost my pink comment that way as well because I wasn't there. So I might have unpinned it because I wasn't present on the video. So I'm just um, drying this sepia paint in place. So I just shaded basically a little bit along the top. So now the purple's just barely sticking out, which is how it was supposed to be to begin with. So you'll see now that it's not going to be quite as crazy as Sepia is a pretty transparent color, so you have to be careful how much paint, again, how much paint you put down at once. Uh, because it will fast, and then you'll kind of have a mess, so a little bit at a time. What am I doing to keep the eyelids clean? When it's dripping, um, and then you usually have to clean it out with a, I use a little Dremel bit to get any, like, excess, um, resin out of the eyelet in the front. The middle ones, like say these two, um, I stick a toothpick through them when they're hanging to drip. And then that gets, the, like, I put a toothpick through them and wipe it on a paper towel and put a toothpick through them um, to get those cleared. Or you can blow them. You can just real quick and blow the resin out. The tail, there's nothing you can do. It's gonna clog no matter what, unless you're rotating them. Or um, unless you're like, have some magical way of doing it that I don't think I've figured out yet, which probably is possible. Uh, I just Dremel them out uh, when I'm finished. I have a tiny Dremel bit. If you need a link to um, how, where to get the bit, I can send that to you. If you PM me, they remind me, I'll send you a link. You gotta be careful with it because I tore a hole right through one of my favorite hoodies the other day because I had this lure here and I had the Dremel bit like right here and it got caught in my sweatshirt and I tried to turn it off but I turned it on high instead. That sweatshirt is gonna crash. On the job hazards. So here's the brown on on the jerk bait and then um, we'll do the black now with the markings. There'll be a little bit of a um, There'll be a little bit of a marking, a black marking right um, behind the gill plate. And then um, some black along the spine and around the eyes. And that should be it. So I'm not sure how I feel about the pink scales yet. It's possible that they might look better as a an interference purple versus a solid color shift purple like interference meaning it only shows up when or you could even just like put interference violet on the white part of the bottom of the belly and then it would flash pink in the light a little bit without actually having like a solid color on there if that makes sense i don't know i'm still so not sure about this color scheme yet it's not perfect that's for sure it's not a total failure, but it's not where I want it to be. Uh, paper clip and allow it to drip first, then clean out eyelet with paper clip. So the problem, okay, I never read your whole question, Dan. The problem with that is it it cures so fast when you put it in the in the light. Um, I don't think you'd have time to pull it out and clear it. If you got the timing down just right, you might be able to do it. There may be people out there that can PM you and tell you if they've been able to do it. And if, if you have, you can PM me that information too. I'll take it. I'm going to do a little text. I'm going to do just a little bit of random um, shading for markings along the face. Because there was a little bit of like rough shading right along the nose. Pretend I'm a fish. Right along the nose area. And then um, there's just a like... I probably have my PSI with you high right now. Maybe just up around the eye a little bit here. And then leave the rest of that part open. 
just a tiny uh, bit of black in the eye socket, just so that the shadow kind of extends out past your... And then I'll do... This little marking behind the um, eye. I don't know. I'm not sold yet, like I said. I might have to redo this one. It looks good on the square bill. Just getting some black shading around the nose here. And you could totally stencil that dot if you wanted to. Um, if you wanted it to look cleaner, I just have to cut something that would uh, be the right shape. Depends on the what you're like the look you're going for. If you want it to look more rough and like natural, or if you want it to be clean, I do both things. Depending on the lure, sometimes I do. Sometimes I do the more clean look. Sometimes I do the more natural thing. Usually the more clean look. Um, but it's not. Um, it's not one hundred percent right way to do everything. I'm probably getting tip dry. You do have to keep the tip of your needle clean. Especially problematic with um, acrylic paints because the, the paint will dry to the needle and then you have to kind of like clean it off or wipe it off. You use epoxy and sometimes you get a lot in the eyelets. Yeah, you could do that. Um, when I used epoxy, I actually rotated my lures and um, then I didn't really have problems. Occasionally it would get in there still if you put it on too heavy. Transparent base pink pearl paint mixed for scales. You lost me. I'm sorry. Robert, I didn't understand what you meant there. Um, okay, so that's about where we're at. And then I, I'll just use like a natural eye of some sort. Um, let me see my picture. So it's basically a gold eye. Um, so some kind of gold eye on this. Let me grab what I have here. Those are six sixes on the big one. Um, so unfortunately the ploppers are like a six and a half millimeter and they don't really make much of anything in six and a half. So you just have to put a six in there. So like uh, this is a little dark. Eyes is they don't. Eyes is they don't make a lot of silver. A different color. I mean, you can get Jetson eyes, and Jetson eyes are amazing. Jetson lure eyes. He makes custom eyes, and they're like the best. But I do so many lures because they're pretty expensive. So um, you really have to like. It's kind of a splurge. For but they are definitely worth it if you're doing something like where you want it, the eyes to look absolutely perfect. Um, but there's some good ones that are just manufactured um, in China too. And one of them is Tygo Fly. This is one I like a lot. They make flies and stuff and they don't make very many colors of eyes, but this is one of them that I love. And I think it's one of the only ones they make. So there is the eyeball that probably is the closest. So, Anyway, there's the Threadfin, Threadfin Shad. So thank you guys for watching. And I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I hope you have some good weather. You get to go fishing. 
And I will see you guys next week. Please do email or PM me if you have any questions I did not answer or if you want to place a custom order. And we'll see you guys next week. Take care. Bye. Thank you.